Hello friends, welcome to this video lecture of traffic engineering and management. So in this today's lecture, we are going to discuss briefly about the pedestrian flow characteristics and pedestrian level of services. So see, if we observe the traffic in a particular area, pedestrians form a very important role in the traffic management systems. The traffic management system should be so uh, robust that it should be beneficial for the pedestrians to move from one place to another. There are different types of pedestrians. There are some of some pedestrians we will observe that they are going on foot to their workplaces. There are some pedestrians we observe they are just moving out for a stroll. There are some pedestrians we observe they are moving out for health reasons. They are going for a walk. There are certain other pedestrians we observe who are using other modes of transportation. Maybe they are coming by bus or they are coming by auto rickshaws or they are coming by own cars, but they are pedestrians for a particular period of time because the bus or their, even their own vehicle is not moving them to their particular destination. So to reach to their exact point of destinations, they have to get down from their uh, motorized transportation and move on foot. So every person, is a pedestrian at some point of time even though that person has not uh, moved the hundred percent of their journey on foot they may move ten percent or five percent of their journey on foot and if we have adequate adequate facilities for pedestrians we will observe that more and more people will choose to move on foot if the distance required to be to be commuted to be traveled is less but are we having adequate facilities for the pedestrians and what are the possible ways to design adequate facilities for pedestrians are the pedestrian transportation system are the pedestrian uh, what to say groups following the same equations as we are seeing in, as we have seen in the motorists we have seen the uh, fundamental diagrams are the pedestrians also following the same relationships let us see that in detail so when we say plos it means pedestrian level of service as we have level of service for motor transportation we have plus for pedestrian transportation this is a very good area for research if any of you are having any idea or any plan to do research in future on transportation systems you may choose this area of plos to find the pedestrian level of services to how to uh, what to say improve the pedestrian level of services in different zones in different areas is a very important topic of research so who is a pedestrian if you go by definition it says that any person on foot is a pedestrian People who walk, sit, stand in public space, uses walking stick, stick, crutches or wheelchair, old or young workers, residents, shoppers, etc. are termed as pedestrians. Who have given this definition? It is given in IRC 103-2012. IRC is Indian Road Congress. IRC gives codes for various, uh, what to say, parameters of transportation engineering. So. IRC is also having a code for pedestrians. So IRC 103 has given the definition of pedestrian. As I have already said that every motorist is a pedestrian in some part of the trip because your motor vehicle will not take you to your exact destination. You will obviously you will be required to walk on foot for a particular, uh, what to say, stretch of your journey. Next, moving forward. There is one term known as pedestrian space requirements, which is also called as body ellipse. So how much space is required by one person? So you will say that it will depend on the, uh, what to say, dimension of a person. Every person is not same. Every person is not having the same height. Every person is not is having the same obesity. So how will we come to a conclusion that this is the space requirement for a pedestrian? But highway capacity manual, Okay, we say Indo HCM, that means Indian Highway Capacity Manual. So Highway Capacity Manual is doing, does research on this level of services and various other parameters of 
pedestrians and various other motor guidelines also so this highway capacity manual of india has given certain guidelines that this should be the particular dimensions for pedestrian space requirements so if you see the india high, uh, highway capacity manual guidelines and if you see the highway capacity manual of other countries like for example us highway capacity man manual is also very prominently used and referred world over so if you see the dimensions of us and india india you will see there are certain differences also so we in india follow the indo highway capacity manual so it says that if there is a pedestrian who is going freely without carrying any kind of luggage then it is considered the body width okay so this is the body width in x axis we can see the body width the body width is considered to be 0.51 meters and body depth is considered is considered as 0.35 meters body depth means how much amount of space you are taking on your front and back body width means that is the your width of the body so this much amount of space is being covered by one pedestrian that is 0.51 meters by 0.35 meters now we, you, it comes that how much space is covered by a pedestrian who is carrying a luggage so if a pedestrian is carrying a luggage obviously the amount of space occupied by that pe pedestrian will be more so how much more it will be it is the body width will be same it is the it is, it is the width of the pedestrian but the depth is considered to be more so it is taken as 0.51 by 0.52 meters okay then moving forward pedestrian data collection so see there are various ways of collection of data for pedestrians when you are going for some research or when you are going to uh, uh, what to say construct some pedestrian facilities you need to have certain data you need to before doing some planning regarding some pedestrians before deciding the width of the footpath before deciding that a footpath is actually required before deciding that a zebra crossing is required before deciding that a signalization is required for pedestrians in that particular location before deciding that some underpass is required or some overbridge is required for pedestrians to cross the road we need certain data because when you have to construct certain such kind of infrastructure you will need to invest a huge amount of money so is it actually requirement so for that we need the pedestrian data so how we will collect the data there are various ways of collecting the data so in earlier days people used to collect the data by just observing people uh, the researchers used to uh, what to say they put some persons over there that those persons will count that okay this many people are moving suppose for example 100 people have moved from 9 o'clock to 9:30 some 500 people have moved from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock in this particular locations so some people used to manually count so that is a very tedious job nowadays we have very advanced techniques we have the we can use various sensors various videos with cameras we can install and we can collect the data so i will not going to detail about each and every type of data collection procedures uh, you can see it by yourself but i'll just say about one of the data collection procedure that is the videographic survey it is one of the very easy and very prominent and very uh, widely used uh, survey you for data collection of pedestrians so how it is done cameras are set up at the selected sites and video recording taken of the pedestrians during the selected observation periods so the cameras are set up at at a certain points and it is observed that the camera takes the entire area and it collects the data of the pedestrian moving through that particular point in which you are doing the research now after doing the collections how you will extract the data because the camera will not tell you that 100 move people have moved the 500 people have moved there are two ways of collecting the data it can be manual you can take the video on your computer you can see it on your office and then you can start counting it is very much easier than standing on the road and counting you can pause the video you can run the video in a slower mode or you can if you if require if you see the less pedestrians are moving you can even play the video in faster speeds and then you can collect calculate the number of pedestrians moving that is the manual mode second way is through computer vision technique there are various softwares available which is which can instruct the computer to count the pedestrians in that particular video so you can do any of these particular techniques if more data is to be calculated you may be using the computer vision techniques so what is the advantage of this type of video survey collection it is more efficient than manual count obviously the disadvantage is it requires more skill because you have to 
know how how to place the camera how to do the counting so you the a person should be skilled enough you cannot just say that any person can go and collect the data using the videographic survey the skill is required this is a disadvantage an advantage is it require it is efficient than the manual counting process so let us move forward so when we say pedestrian flow characteristics okay so when we talk about vehicular flow characteristics we had an equation that q is equal to u k so the same equation is also eligible q is equal to u k i hope all of you remember this equation again and again i have said that this is the backbone of traffic engineering this equation can lead to various other equations so i suggested all of you to remember that equation q equal to u k that is flow is equal to speed into density so this that particular equation is also applicable for uh, pedestrians okay the flow of pedestrians is similar to that of flow of vehicle now when we talk about the relationship between speed and density there are three different types of flow models three different types of relationships which have come up in different time periods by various prominent researchers one is the linear model another one is the number one is the linear model number two you can see on your screen is the logarithmic model and number three is the exponential model the linear the linear relationship is given by the scientist greenshield so it is also known as greenshield's macroscopic stream model the logarithmic relationship is given by greenberg so it is known as greenberg's logarithmic model and the exponential model is given by underwood so it's also known as underwood's exponential model so these three diagrams i can i hope all of you can understand the linear the relationship the graphs of linear logarithmic and exponential when you say exponential it is e to the power x logarithmic means log of x and linear is similar y is equal to mx plus c so moving forward there are three different types of regime approach of pedestrian flow models one is single regime another one is multiple regime and another one is two regime model so what do we understand by single regime approach the single regime approach is based on the assumption that the same speed density relation is valid for the entire range of densities seen in traffic streams so for example if when you do a study in a traffic stream the densities will vary from time to time the densities will vary from zone to zone so for these entire different densities if the same speed density relationship that is if suppose we make a relationship y is equal to mx plus c okay if you make a relationship suppose uh, u is equal to 5 plus 0.4 k okay so if the if you come up with that relationship having all the data of different densities and speeds in a particular location at across the time for different densities using the different densities you have come up this equation that uh, u is equal to 5 plus 0.4 k now if will this relationship be valid through across different densities if you are taking that into into consideration then that is single regime approach okay but if you define see at the densities for example for 0 to 100 you make one relationship u is equal to you come up with a relationship using the different uh, methods and then you come up with a relationship that u is equal to uh, 3 plus 0.2 k again from 100 to 500 the relationship is different suppose u is equal to 7 plus 0.5 k again from 500 to 800 the relationship is different suppose so then we have different regime approaches that which is known as multiple regime approach of pedestrian flow characteristics since human behavior will be different at different densities so when you go for multiple regime approach your calculations will be more and more accurate but to go for multiple regime approach to go for so many approaches for so to, to come up with so many models our work will be tedious and it will be a very lengthy process process so that the, the simplest one is to come up with a two regime model to come up with two equations one is separate the congested traffic and separate the uncongested traffic if it is a jam condition if the speed is very less you separate that traffic and calculate the densities for that traffic and you do the calculation and for the free flow speeds for design speeds and for moderate traffic condition you say it to be uncongested traffic and you calculate do the calculations in that uh, for that particular speed density relationship separately so there are two relationship single reason is, uh, one is the congested and another one is the uncongested so that is the two regime model i hope the concept is clear single regime multi regime and two regime approach moving forward 
so what is the why is the need for the pedestrian flow models okay so there are various reasons why we need the pedestrian flow models as we have traffic flow models we are now we are talking about pedestrian flow models so why it is necessary it is necessary to forecast future flow parameters using the model equations so we have the equations which gives the relationship between speed and density flow and density and speed and flow so using this particular flow models using this particular equations we can come up with the future flow parameters we can come up with the speed density and uh, flow which will come up which will be occurring in after next five years so if we can predict that we can better design the pedestrian facilities so the next point says that only to design the capacity of pedestrian facilities like sidewalk crosswalk corridor stairway etc so design these facilities you have to know the pedestrian flow models simply you cannot start designing a uh, overbridge for the pedestrians to cross okay you have to know the accurate data ne next important reason why pedestrian flow models are important is to study the performance of the facility that is the to study the level of service as we have said in detail about the motorized transportation level of service that is the comfortable comfort that you are attaining while you are moving from one point to another similarly we have pedestrian level of service okay the level of service for pedestrian is known as pedestrian level of service which you the short form which is which is plus p l o s so uh, as we have uh, discussed for motorized transportation similar is the case for pedestrians also so we will see in the next slides about plus <coughs> before discussing about plus i will give you a very brief this uh, introduction about pedestrian signalization in many places we do not see any space separate signalization for pedestrians pedestrians cross the roads whenever there is a zebra crossing or pedestrians just look right side then move forward and again they look left side and then they cross the road it's very difficult task for a pedestrian to cross the road many times you wait for you you you, you wait you see other persons where they are crossing and then you start crossing the road or you take the help of your friends and many times we see there are old persons who have difficulty in moving who have difficulty in uh, vision issues so those for those people it's very difficult to cross the roads they have to wait for minutes to cross the road so it is very important to have some adequate facilities so that pedestrians can smoothly cross the road from one end to another that is why there is a research on pedestrian signalization and in many prominent cities we see separate signalization for pedestrians in cities like guwahati you will observe very less places having pedestrian signalization in many places people just wait in the red light for whenever there is a red light for the vehicles people start crossing the road because the vehicles will stop but in many places we see separate red lights and green lights for pedestrian whenever there is red light for uh, vehicles there will be green light for pedestrians and whenever there is green light for the vehicles there will be red light for the pedestrians this will help the pedestrians more because the lights will be just in front of them so there are three types of pedestrian crossings one is the pelican crossing another one is puffin crossing another one is taucan crossing pelican and puffin crossings are similar types of crossings which are which have uh, signals like red lights and green lights and beeping of green lights to uh, for the to help the pedestrians to cross the road whenever there is red light you have to stop whenever there is green light you have to go whenever there is beeping of green light that means whoever have started to cross they can cross but whoever have not started to cross yet they should not stop because red light is coming soon in the midway if there will be red light and there will be green light for the vehicles they will face a difficult time so pelican says the name says pedestrian light indication you can see on your screen puffin is pedestrian user friendly intelligence and taucan is two can cross so in pelican crossing there is a button to activate the red and green light okay whereas in puffin crossing there is a button and also with the button we have motion detectors there is a difference between pelican and puffin crossing similar type of crossing but here there is traffic lights uh, <coughs> where there is button to activate whereas in puffin there is button and also uh, motion detectors so it is also said that pedestrian user friendly intelligence intelligence means that motion detector is there that is why it is said to be intelligent now what is taucan so the taucan crossing it says that two can cross tau can two can cross two means who and who will cross one is the pedestrian another one is bicyclist the bicyclist are also allowed to cross the road uh, in the tau can crossing so you can see on the uh, 
screen that of token crossing in, in the figure there is also a, a symbol for bicycle that the road user also there is green light for the road user there is green light for the bicycle users also in on the screen you can see a link of a particular website if you go to this particular use website you can see very good animations where all these three crossings are uh, explained i have taken the photographs from this website only so you can see animated videos for these particular crossings. The concepts will be more clear. Moving mm -hmm. forward. <coughs> Pedestrian level of service, also known as PLOS. So what is PLOS? It is a measure for assessing the operation, operating condition of facility in a quantitative manner. It denotes the level of comfort provided by the facility to pedestrians. So if you are having a plus of A category, that is the best. If you are having a plus of F category, that means the worst level of service is being provided. The pedestrians are unable to cross the road. The pedestrians are unable to move freely. The, <clears throat> there is no adequate space between pedestrians. They are moving in a very jam conditions. So that type of level of service is F. The pedestrians can move very freely, very smoothly. They can cross the road. There is zebra crossing. There is signalization. There is a foot over bridges for pedestrians. Then the a pedestrian level of services will be a category and in between we have a b c d and e if we calculate and find out that the level of plus is category c for a particular area and in another area if we find that the, the plus is category e we will say that the area c is more pedestrian friendly compared to the uh, what to say the area where the plus is e okay the plus is classified based on various parameters okay those parameters are known as MOEs. What is the meaning of MOE? That is the measures of effectiveness. Okay. So what are the MOEs that are considered for PLOS to measure the PLOS? These are the speed, flow and density. The speed of pedestrians, the flow of pedestrians, the density of pedestrians are calculated, are counted and the data is calculated on the on these particular parameters and then the PLOS is calculated. So what is measure of effectiveness? Measure of effectiveness is nothing but the factors on which the plus is classified. What are these fact MOEs? These are the speed, flow, and density. Very simple. I hope all of you have got a brief idea of pedestrian level of service. So <coughs> I will end the today's lecture here. And I really do hope that uh, you have got some good idea on the pedestrian flow parameters and pedestrian uh, level of services. So there is a Pedestrians form a very great amount, uh, plays a very big role in the traffic flow parameters. If you have adequate pedestrian facilities, then the other motorists can also move in a much better manner and the society can also grow in a sustainable manner. With this, I would like to end the today's lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much.